It's true. For, for decades, political scientists have been um, researching how people cast their votes. And when doing that research, they use uh, randomized control tests. They isolate one group of voters, and they isolate another one, and they apply vote shifting techniques to one of those groups while leaving the other one completely alone. At the end, they are able to measure the voting behavior of each group, and if the difference in behavior is big enough, if it's statistic sorry, statistically significant, then all the other factors have been controlled for, then you can know with pretty good certainty that the vote shifting techniques you applied to one group's worked. Political scientists have been running these studies for decades now, and since the 1980s they've known that the number one single most effective way to change someone's vote is with a direct one-on-one -on -one conversation with a well-trained volunteer. And that's why we've centered our plan to win around one-on-one -on -one conversations, because they have incredible power. They're more powerful than negative attack ads, online news stories, newspapers, and they have the power to cut through the emptiness and spin of normal political rhetoric. They have the power to speak to a person's values and aspirations. And they absolutely have the power to shift votes. So why are these conversations so powerful? It's because despite all of our differences, we actually share a set of common values. And we all value decency, honesty, compassion. We all want to protect each other, the people we love, the environment from harm. And we do believe that there's such a thing as the common good. But most political debate doesn't occur at the level of values. Instead, usually we argue about facts and analysis, we repeat the same talking points that politicians use, and values don't even come into it. And for all the energy we put into those political arguments, they don't persuade or convince anyone, right? I feel like this happens when I argue with my dad sometimes. <laughs> the same political scientists we are talking about earlier have done some research here that proves this as well. And the truth is that when we argue about politics with people, usually all we do is entrench the beliefs that they already have. So if we set out to call into Moringa or Dixon and tell people that they're wrong and that they should vote the way that we think they should vote, then we're going to lose. So instead, we need to go outside familiar political grounds. When we're having conversations with voters, we need to connect with them on values. And how do we do that? First, we use GetUp's award-winning, world-class phone banking system to call voters. And when someone answers, we use one of our scripted conversation openers uh, to get things started on the right foot. And then we ask them questions. Usually, voters take a while to open up, but after a while, you know, we're a stranger, just call them on the phone, so. After a while, they open up. And usually, people are actually pretty happy to tell you their opinions. So we talk to them and we share stories about ourselves, we share our values and where we come from, we share stories about why we feel that this election campaign is very important and why it represents an important opportunity and why we're volunteering our time to campaign for change. And then we invite them to talk about their story and we listen and they share what motivates them. And then some magic happens. They talk, they tell us what informs their political perspective and then as they talk, their values come to the fore and they find themselves realising that their values are impacted by politics and that it really does matter who gets elected at the next election. And they commit to vote in a way that's different and that really reflects their values. So in the end, you actually don't convince them at all, they convince themselves. And over the course of a 20-minute conversation, someone who was a die-hard voter for Tony Abbott or Peter Dutton or Kevin Andrews realises that that person doesn't represent their values or what they want to see in the world, and they'll tell you that they're going to vote them out. So we call this method deep canvassing, and it's why the hard right's going to lose this election. But before I go further, I want to make one thing clear. In the past, um, people have spoken to us and they've asked us if we think that deep canvassing, that speaking to voters one-on-one, -on -one, uh, is manipulative, and I couldn't disagree more. Um, I think that the 24-hour news cycle is manipulative. I think that the way that politicians talk to us and avoid answering questions is manipulative. And I think that uh, the way that um, cult like culture warriors from the right wing jump online and spread hatred, I think that's manipulative. I think that deep canvassing is exactly the reverse. It's everyday people connecting on shared values, hopes and aspirations. It's democracy. And um, 
I couldn't think of anything more democratic, actually, and I'm really proud that it's part of our campaign. In fact, it's the center of our campaign. So there are two main ways that we can have these um, powerful, deep canvassing conversations. We can go over the phone or on doorsteps. We're doing both this election, but our door knocking is going to be restricted to taking on Peter Dutton and Dixon and Tony Abbott and Moringa. And it's up to the locals down there, really, the people who can actually know their own electorate, to hit the streets and make those conversations happen. And that means that the biggest part of our voter contact campaign is going to involve calling. So the first thing we're going to do is make sure that we're talking to the right voters. We've worked with the data specialists and polling companies that uh, we're partnering with to build a demographic picture of the electorates that we're working in. And we've conducted polls of different demographic groups to get a picture of the voting habits and their perspectives on key election issues. And by putting that information together, we're able to build demographic profiles of voters most likely to be currently planning to vote for hard-right MPs, but also most likely to be persuaded away from that choice by deep canvassing, sorry, by deep canvassing conversations. So of course it's not perfect, sometimes we get, we get it wrong, but in general, it's proven to be 40% more accurate than chance in determining who the right voters are to talk to. So as we roll out the campaign, we're also gonna be feeding back all of the information that we gather along the way, um, from our like, online advertising, from the people who are gonna be making calls in order to sharpen the campaign, and we'll be able to have maximum impact if we, if we do that. So let's take a quick look at this model. So this is, <laughs> sorry, turn around too quickly. <laughs> okay, so this is Peter Dutton's electorate, Dixon. Actually, you know, let's go over here for a second. So the more heavily shaded areas, the more heavily shaded areas are the ones that we want to prioritize. You can see that by focusing our efforts on particular areas of the electorate, we'll make sure that our time on the phone is having the maximum impact. <coughs> can we go to... So this is Tony Abbott's electorate of Warringah. And again, the heavily shaded areas are the ones that we're going to be focusing on most. Now, we're not going to ignore everywhere else, but in some places we might try and call voters uh, four or even five times over the course of the campaign to give ourselves the best chance possible of having a conversation with them. In other places, it might just be like once or twice. So the model tells us where to prioritize and how to focus our efforts. So, now we know who we need to make those phone calls to, we need to figure out how many we need to make. We're able to access the phone numbers for around 35,000 voters in each of our target electorates. We've got four top priority target electorates and four lower priority, but still very important, hard right electorates. And we want to max maximize our efforts in the top priority seats, and that means an average of four or five attempts to, to call each voter. So that's 175,000 calls roughly per electorate. For our, for our second priority seats, we probably want to make more like an average of two attempts to call each voter. And then if you combine that with all of the confirmation calls that we'll be making, and I think you would have gotten some to remind you to come to this event, thank you. Um, then taken together, um, that adds up to about a million phone calls, which sounds like a lot. <laughs> now for context, in the 2016 federal election, we made about 218,000 calls. Um, and we need to make more than four times that many this time around if we want to win the change that we need to see. We don't have any more money than we did in 2016, and we don't have any more staff. And that means that we need something to make up the difference. And that something is you. Now, the normal way of doing phone calling in politics is to set up a volunteer call center somewhere, and get people to come in and make calls. That's what political parties do, that's what we tried in 2016. But it's not how we're gonna make a million calls between now and the election. That model is too centralized, and it simply doesn't allow us to get big enough to make a million calls. The only way that we can make a million calls is if everyday people in the community, people like you, step up to become leaders. Some of you have been to get up events. Some of you may have volunteered before to do phone banking or door knocks, whether for get up or another organization. This time around, we don't just need volunteers, we need leaders. We're gonna train as many people as possible all around the country to step up and run phone banking calling parties of like five to 10 people in their own homes or in community spaces they can find. And it begins today. 
Now, in a moment, I'm going to ask you to step up and become one of these leaders. It will make our, uh, our goal of making a million phone calls and turfing the hard right out of Parliament a reality. And if you do step up, you'll be responsible for organising the phone bank, for training the volunteers that show up to your event, and leading the phone bank on the night. But don't worry, you will have, have support, training materials from GetUp staff and organisers and other volunteers every step of the way. And on the night of your first polling party, you're going to have an experienced volunteer with there to help you. Uh, I'm not going to lie, stepping up is going to be hard. It's not, it's not going to be easy to win this campaign. We're targeting some of the most effective and uh, visceral and vociferous campaigners in the hard right. So it's not going to be easy, but most of the important things in life really are. Now we've got three months before the election. So if you were to host a calling party in your house every fortnight from now until then, and every calling party takes about three hours to organise, including the, the prep, then that's 24 hours. So what I'm asking you is, can you give one day of your life over the next three months to make sure that we don't have to put up with Tony Abbott coming down to our parliament ever again? Okay, so this is the this is the good bit. Okay, so we need calling party house. I know there's lots of people in the crowd here thinking I'm definitely going to host one. I can definitely do this. We don't just need one calling party. We need three or more. We need you to be hosting these events on a regular basis between now and the election, and we're going to be helping you every single step of the way. And we need to do this to make those million calls and to overcome. Sorry, and. Just remember that it's going to be 24 hours of your life. So, if you're ready to host a calling party, I'd like you to raise your hand now, please. Amazing. Right, give them a hand. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. I know you can. Keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. I know you can, but I know we can do it better than this. We can make all of those other electorates look way less enthusiastic about Tony, turfing Tony Abbott than we are. Come on. Yep. Awesome. More? Come on, if, you, if you're thinking like, oh, I don't have experience, I, like, I don't know enough about the issues, I've never done this before, like we're gonna be there to help you out, there's gonna be other people helping out. You'll have all the resources that you need and you're gonna get better as you do it. Okay, great, okay, fantastic.